This project started last Saturday when we took a ride down to the windmill farm market to grab some Brussels sprouts and some cabbage for some more sauerkraut. On the way back, we decided to stop at the Habitat for Humanity Restore store. And while we are in there, I saw this uh, storm door that they had in there. It was marked $100. It looked like it was brand new in the box. Um, the size seemed to be right for what we needed. I didn't really know much about it, but I decided to grab it anyway. And I didn't expect that it would be as good a door as it was when I got home and opened it. Um, it's actually a, um, a really high quality, energy efficient door with built-in screens and everything else. And it turned out that it's like a $535 door that I got for $100. So it was a good deal. But at the time, I just figured I'd grab it, and if there was anything wrong with it or it was broken, I'd just, you know, call it off as a donation to restore. But uh, it turned out I really got a good deal on it. So today I'm going to put this in, and you can see our old doors needed replacing for some time. I was going to do all that this summer, but it was just so nasty and rainy and just too hot to do much. So I, I didn't do anything, and you can see it needs repainting and stuff. And, I was going to redo the whole porch this summer, but I didn't get around to it. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by pulling the old door off. And uh, this door is like 25 years old. You can see like that bottom closer for it had been replaced um, with one white one I found at the dollar store because that leaked. And, um, you know, it just was, it was shot. It was thin, uninsulated and everything else. Where the new one is, um, I didn't realize it, but it's like a one and three eighths thick, fully insulated door. So it took a couple of minutes this morning. It was about 45 degrees out when I started. You can see the sun was out for a little while, but it soon went in for the rest of the day until later on. I got the old door out of the way, and um, this is on the west facing side. The sun hits it really hot in the afternoon, and no matter how, how often you paint it, the paint always winds up. Uh, it's getting burned off by the sun, it seems like, so it needed it anyway. So I'm just going to do a quick cleanup, uh, try to sand off what I can, whatever, you know, flake and loose for now. In the spring, I'll do a better job, but I just want to touch up around where the door is going because it won't be easy to do later. So I had some of this Kills primer that's usually pretty good at, um, you know, it can take the UV pretty good and stuff. Only trouble is it says don't use it below 50 degrees and right now it's, you know, it's under 50 and there's a wind chill and everything else. So I'm just hoping that it'll dry right and I'm going to put it on here. It did take a little longer to dry, about, uh, took a little bit over an hour to dry, but, you know, it did dry so I was happy in the end. And there, I got that just kind of touched up for now. In the spring, I'm going to repaint the door and everything else. And the new door, it said the first thing you do is you put on the hinge side uh, track or the hinge side uh, extrusion there. You just hold it up in place and you mark this one keyhole slot. And you have to drill a pilot hole and then put in a screw to just... Uh, hang the door when you first start putting it up because the, the new door is an extremely heavy door because it has all double insulated glass in it and stuff too so uh, this sort of gives you a little helping hand so you drill the hole you know you mark it you drill a hole in the center and then you make sure that that extrusion will drop on and lock in place and then you have to mount the hinges to the door now, none of that is, at, well, there's one hole drilled, but the rest of them aren't because these doors can be uh, set up to be either right or left hand hinged. So what you have to do is decide which side you want to hinge it, and there's one screw to locate the extrusion there. And then you have to go through and you have to drill the other seven holes for the other four hinges, or the other three hinges, there's four all together. And just... Uh, you know, insert the self-tapping screws. And it, I tell you what, it's really cold out there this morning. Um, I wish I had done this a week ago, but I didn't know I was going to be doing it anyway. Uh, this is just kind of a surprise finding something like this that you really could use at the, um, the Restore store. 
Now I started this figuring it would be maybe an hour job uh, and I didn't really think it would take as long as it did but in the end it wound up taking me four hours because I had to wait extra time for the paint to dry and stuff and just um, you know it does take a while to get everything mounted and there it is that first screw that I put in at what the door hangs on and then once that's hanging there you just go back and you start drilling uh, pilot holes and putting all the screws on the inside there of that hinge extrusion so that one is drill is screwed solidly to the brick mold on the door I think there were about eight screws you have to put in here and that really is what gives the door support and then once you get that screwed on uh, there's a top cap that goes across there a flashing piece and you can see how this door is actually thicker and it does stick out past the uh, trim pieces there but it does have really nice gaskets so you just have to locate that on the top and uh, just check the gap they tell you to make sure it's an even gap all the way across because there is a gasket in that felt type gasket that seals on it that's about the only really critical thing here is just make sure that the door doesn't hit it or anything and that the gasket seals properly. And then once it's located, just a matter of going back and there are three screws that go in across the top. So there you can see I got it right where I want it and I'm just going to drill the first screw hole on this side. The other one kind of sits on top of the uh, that vertic the hinge extrusion. So you do need an eighth inch bit and you know you need to drill for installing one of these doors too. And then I'll go back and I'll get the other screws in there so that top piece is mounted. Then there's a another extrusion for the latch side. And same thing, it's really uh, fairly easy. Just put it in there, um, hold it up against that top one. And there is a little plastic piece that goes on the bottom also that extends out on both the hinge side and this latch side extrusion. So you, you just mount them to the top there and then you uh, stretch the plastic down to seal the bottom. And the same thing, it's a, you know, it's a pretty simple matter just putting screws in. Now these screws go in the face. And there's also a bunch of screws that went in the face of the hinge side one too that I didn't show. So you can see this door does stick out about a half inch more front of the frame than the old one. That's how they deal with the extra thickness for the insulation. And then the same thing, just go down the whole side and make sure the gap's even and you know everything closes right. And then there's a bottom seal that goes on it, seal adjustable seal piece, and they give you this rubber seal that has to slip in there. And it turns out it was too cold. I had to put it inside for a while to warm up before I could get it in place. And then you got to go back and clip it on over. Um, the door's kind of formed, so you can see how it clips in there. And then line that up on the bottom, and there's two screws that go on the inside. And there's some plastic strips that snap in uh, up both sides and across the top to cover the screws that went in on the face. It's um, The extrusion has some little areas that they grab on. Then the worst part turned out being putting the latch on. Um, they don't come drilled for latch because the latch can be put on either side depending on how you're going to hinge it. So they cut the, cut the opening, the mortise in the side there on both sides, and there's a plate that goes on the other side. And they give you this little cardboard template you have to fold up in, you know, like seven creases in it to get it around the edges and the raised lips and the door and stuff. So I figured I was going to have a little bit of a problem with this, but I'll show you what I wound up doing later. So you get that in place, then you have to drill holes from both sides. Um, there's little crosshairs there and you have to drill four holes on each side. The top and the bottom one are seven sixteenths and the middle one is two or three quarters. 
So they tell you to start with an eighth of an inch bit, and I did that. And then they tell you to use spade bits to drill out the other thing, and I didn't do that. I um, I grabbed some of my hole drills because I figured they'd be more accurate and safer. And I just used a step drill there to open them up and um, went through from both sides and uh, opened up the top and the bottom four with this 7 16 drill. And then I went back and opened up the other ones with three quarters. Then when I started mounting the hardware in there, I found out that I was off by just a little bit under a sixteenth on the centering of the holes from side to side. So I had to go back in with the die grinder and the little burr out there to just clean that up a hair to get the door bushing to, to sit in there right. So it did take a little extra fiddling just because I was off just a hair with that template. But it is a very high quality lock that they give you. It's a mortise in lock and um, you know everything does go together once you get the holes lined up. Then on the last side, I had to chisel out a little bit. I had to make room for the, um, there's a long deadbolt that goes in there. And there's also a longer latch pawl. So I chiseled that out and got the, got that all going. And then there's a um, top and bottom closer on this door. So you just have to put them up there. They said to mount, mount them an inch down from the uh, top of the opening. So. I just put it in place here and drilled some clearance holes and mounted it. And uh, in the meantime, my dog's going crazy because she can finally see out the door there for the first time. And there you can see I got the top and the bottom things, uh, closers on there, and everything works right. Uh, there it is on the top. And the door is just beautiful it's a pretty amazing door all double insulated really nice and you can see that bottom closure has got a little button that you push if you want to keep it open too it's really simple to use and the neat thing is you, for the screen you just flip that latch and you slide the window down and the screen comes down out of the top i had never seen anything like this before it's pretty amazing um this turned out being a really you know high quality door and I love that feature because you're always dealing with a screen in the way in the winter time to look through. So that really um, worked out nice and, you know, deadbolt and everything else. And in the springtime, I get a chance. I'm going to go back and paint up the other door and clean everything up and, you know, put new hardware on it and stuff. But for now, um, you know, it's a nice door and I got a good deal and I just thought I'd show you how easy it is to install one. It's amazing how a trip to uh, just get a couple of veggies turned into a, a big project for me. But we really needed it, and, um, you know, we did get a really good deal on it. And it does make the, the front entryway there look a little bit better now. And one thing to remember is Lowe's sends a lot of their overstock to Habitat for Humanity Restore. And um, it's a good place to find things like this, and actually it's a good way to give them a donation too. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.